Here we have an SS laptop that came in for repair and customer included notes on the motherboard. And you know how much I love notes. A note here, a note here, and it looks like the customer included a bag of parts. Anytime we get a device with a bag of parts, it means we're going to find a Hiroshima on the board. We're going to find a big mess. Customer ordered the parts so he can do it himself. When he could not do it himself, he included the parts along with the board. That's what the parts mean. Every time. Let's read the notes and see what the customer wrote. Replaced. Removed. Replaced and removed. I do not see anything replaced. And I do not see anything removed. I do not see it. Let's take a look at the second note. Replaced. Means nothing and I cannot see what the customer is saying. Let me take a look. I see signs of flux down here. Oh, looks like the customer totally removed the MOSFET all the way down on the bottom. I told you, anytime we get parts along with a motherboard, it means the customer bought them so he can attempt the repair and he mails them over once he figures out that he cannot do the repair. We have burnt plastic next to the MOSFET on the capacitor here because the MOSFET is very close to the cap and that cap can blow. If you apply a lot of heat here, that cap can blow, can pop. Let's see what other mess we're going to find on this board. I do not know why the customer removed this MOSFET. I've done probably thousands of Asus laptops and I never, ever, ever had to replace this MOSFET. I do not know what was the reason for removing that MOSFET. But all I can say is likely lack of knowledge. I see signs of flux here. To the left side of the RAM, we have the RAM chips here. RAM sticks. And I see flux. What was done to this side of the board? That's what we have to figure out. It looks like this MOSFET was replaced or tempered with. We can tell by the soldering. That's factory soldering and that's non-factory soldering. And here I believe this is empty by default. And what else? And I bet that all the stuff that was done to this board was not needed. Probably it's some shorted cap and the job is done. But now with the mess that we see on the board, Maybe it went from something that could have been fixed to something that may not be fixable. I don't know. We're going to have to see. Back of the board looks clean. I do not see any signs of flux on back of the board. So let's stick to front of the board. The first thing I want to do is replace the MOSFET that we have down on the bottom. But before I do so, let's test for a short and see if we have a short circuit on the drain of the MOSFET meter in diode mode and do we have a short right here oh we do we do have a short here so the person who walked on this board probably measured for a short on drain and he assumed the problem is the MOSFET that's likely what happened let's grab a MOSFET from a donor board I do not know what parts the customer included, but I'll get exactly the same MOSFET from a donor board. Big Boss is on fire today. I cannot keep up with him. It's crazy. I cannot keep up with him. He has an Asus motherboard that we need to work on. An iPad motherboard. I do not know what type of laptop, motherboard, and another motherboard. 
four motherboards he disassembled while I was working on a Nintendo Switch game console. Let's solder this MOSFET. Looks like we have unleaded solder on the board. Let's apply leaded solder. Get rid of the glare using our amazing anti-glare light. Just look at the details without the glare. All right, let's do it. All right, and we're done here. And I should have put my film extractor on. Meter in diet mode. Let's measure gate source. All right. So we replaced the MOSFET, but now we need to find out where the short is coming from because we do have a short on the drain of this MOSFET. What we're going to have to do is inject voltage and see what is getting hot on the board. All right, so we're going to inject voltage, drain of the MOSFET, where the short is, and let's see what's getting hot on the board. Right there, right on top left. See it? Let's try again. Right there. Right there. So heat is coming from right over here. I was not able to hold something to pinpoint where heat was coming from because I was holding the thermal camera with one hand and injecting voltage with the other hand. And since I do not have three hands, I cannot use my third hand to pinpoint where heat is coming from. But if I am to guess, I'll go with this one. We can either use our atomizer, apply some Rosen flux, and then we can see where flux evaporates first or melts first. Or we can just use a tiny bit of alcohol. I never like to use alcohol because when you have a little heat, it's very hard to tell where the short is coming from. But in this case, I think we have a lot of heat because I could feel it with my finger. So I'm going to apply voltage on the short and just go like this with my swab. You see, it's hard to tell where the short is coming from. Let's try this one more time. I'm going to up the voltage just a tiny bit. Let's try again. See, because alcohol is clear, it's very hard to tell. Or maybe we can turn off our anti-glare light and use our ring light. Maybe that way we can see better. We can see the reflections. And that's the one case where reflections are good. See it? Watch. One more time. You see it? This cap right here. Watch. I'm going to apply alcohol on the whole area. And you see how alcohol is evaporating off this cap first? Got it. So that's one way to figure out where the short is coming from if you want to pinpoint using alcohol, but you have to have enough heat on the component in order to see it. So the short is coming from this cap right here. If we measure in continuity mode, let's confirm that we have a short. And we do. Let's use our hot tweezers. Cap is out, and let's see if we still have a short. And the short is gone. <laughs> the short is gone. One cap. The customer worked on half the board, 
and the problem is a capacitor. Replaced, removed, replaced, removed, replaced, removed. Who cares? Just send the board. We'll replace that shorted cap for you, and the board is fixed. Not a big deal. You do not need to include any notes. Let's grab a cap from here. And I did mention it in yesterday's video while fixing Asus laptop that you can buy those caps off our site. Whatever I use here, we sell. If it's useful, then we sell it. If it's not useful, we do not sell it. So everything that you find on our site is useful because we use it on the bench here. And why am I using hot air? I can use my hot tweezers, but that's okay for a change. We're done. We soldered the cap and we are done. Now, assuming that we do not have anything else on the board that was messed up, then the board should work. Maybe I overlooked something that the customer did. You see, we do not have a short anymore. We are reading 0.34 voltage drop. As the board cools down a bit, the number is going to go up to about 0.42. So we no longer have a short and the board should work. Before we had a short on the DC MOSFET. The MOSFET's right next to the charging connector. Now we do not have a short anymore. The customer removed this MOSFET here. They pointed to replace, remove somewhere here. And honestly, I did not measure any one of those MOSFETs to see if we have a short. But if we have a short on any one of the MOSFETs here, V-Core MOSFETs, then it's going to show up right over here. And since we are not measuring for a short on this MOSFET, then we can be 100% sure that we don't have a short on the V-Core MOSFETs. Maybe I'll work on this other Asus laptop and include it in this video. The one that we have here or maybe not the thing is the longer the video the longer it will take to edit the video i'm gonna give it a big bus to reassemble and test and i'll be back to finish the video so let's take a look at this other asus motherboard while big bus is reassembling the other board we have a dc connector right here and we have one mosfet here and on this board i know that we have another mosfet right over here so i'm interested in this one based on my experience working on those motherboards. And we're going to measure to see if we have a short circuit on the drain of the MOSFET that's on back of the board. So we're going to measure right over here. Do we have a short? And we do. Every single time. Let's inject voltage. Maybe we can get this board done quick also. But now the only problem is the thermal camera battery does not have a charge anymore. I just need it for 20 seconds. 20 seconds, that's all I need you for. And then I can toss you in the garbage afterwards. I'm just kidding. Just be nice. Otherwise, it's going to take 10, 15 minutes to charge the battery a bit. I'm using the Fleur E60 thermal camera. And some viewers ask, why aren't you using the Unity thermal camera that you spoke about or the ones that you sell in your shop? I do not see a reason why I need to carry, I need to have two thermal cameras on the bench. I already have one. Why would I waste a Unity thermal camera when I have this one? And this one has a higher resolution than the other one. But the Unity thermal camera has the macro lens, and this one does not. Macro lens for this camera is $3,000, and I'm not going to buy it for $3,000. So that's where the Unity thermal camera excels, because it does have the macro lens that you can buy. Yeah, the battery is drained. But the answer is there is no reason why I should have a Unity thermal camera on my bench when I already have one here. Big Boss is almost done with the assembly of the Asus laptop that we just worked on. And let's see. Is it plugged in? Oh yeah, the plug is from the back. Yes, yes. I see the backlight. And I do see the light on the power button. We see the nice colorful keyboard backlight. But that does not mean anything. We need to see something on the screen.
look at Big Boss. He has like 10 things open on the bench. And down here also. And over there. What's going on? It didn't work. Oh, oh, <laughs> it worked. Amazing. Amazing. Awesome. Big boss, the boss of all bosses. So I need to finish the motherboard for this one. I need to finish the motherboard for this one so he can reassemble. I need to finish the motherboard for this one. We are running out of room. We have the iPad motherboard I need to work on also. And we have this one. How many boards do you have on my bench? Big boss just killing me. We have the iPad motherboard right here. We have one here, we have one here, and we have the one that I'm working on right now. And waiting for the FLIR battery to charge right here. So laptop one is fixed, and let's continue working on laptop number two. We're gonna check to see if the battery for the thermal camera has charged. I only need it for 20 seconds. It's putting up right here. All right, let's see. It's on. All right, got it. Got it. And thank you very much, thermal camera. We do not need your services anymore. You've been nice, but get out of here. I got it. Let's see if you can see it. Can you see it? You cannot? You need to check your eye doctor because it's very visible. And we do see like a chip, a crack on that cap. Let me see if I can zoom in some more. Right there, you see it? That cap is gone. Gone with the wind. On our way to fix laptop number two. Got it. Flip the board. And let's see if we still have a short. Meter in diet mode. And let's measure right here. Wow. The short is gone. How many times do I say this every day? The short is gone. A lot. Again, you can find those caps on our site. You can purchase them off our site. We do have the 805 size and 1206. Those are the most popular for laptops. But you can also purchase the capacitor SMD books. And I have all of them right here. All cap books and all resistor books. I use them every single day. We do carry and sell all the books. You can buy all 10 of them at once or you can buy any individual book as you see fit. Amazing. We did it. We as an I, not you, because a lot of viewers tell me, who's we? We as I. I'm just saying we out of respect. If I say I, I is an ugly word. I did this. I gave him that. I'm the one who did this. I'm the one who did that. You sound selfish when you say I. If I am to let my daughter marry somebody and that person uses the word I five times in one sitting, that's it. It's over. And I'm done. Or we are done. <laughs> I'll be back and we're gonna check on Big Boss the second board that we worked on should be a fix let me go on this side because light is coming from the left yes yes very good 
two laptops in one video and both of them are fixed amazing amazing I told you that big boss is the boss of all bosses I told you and let me check on my dad if he's doing his job with e-commerce mailman already came in UPS already came in and he has more those will not ship out until tomorrow because mailman already picked up what are you doing which one let's see customer ordered the grinding pan super fine tweezers super fine tweezers precision needles and mechanic 20 piece bga tool and this one what did the customer order universal pcb holder grinding pen or grinding stone precision needles dual head brush grinding pen and then we have the mechanic precision tweezer and we have amtac flux and what do we have under here we have fat strips and we have this order we have super fine tweezers super fine tweezers micro soldering training practice board dual head brush premium desolder wick and we have northridge fix t-shirt awesome and that's it the job is done don't forget to like and subscribe leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video